So here is yet another type of cyst. Um, this was a shave biopsy of a kind of a bluish or translucent kind of looking uh, papule um, on the eyelid. And you can see there's this large um, space in the dermis. This is a space that is, um, that is open, doesn't really have much in it. And if it had any contents in it, it's probably washed out during processing. And so let's come and look at the lining. So that's how we classify cysts usually is by their contents and then also by what kind of lining they have. And the lining of this cyst is made of these kind of little round cells that we call, we call these cuboidal. When epithelial cells are kind of round, uh, you can imagine that the edges of each cell would kind of give you a square sort of shape. So we say they're cuboidal. And they're kind of a double layer of cuboidal cells. See, there's kind of like one layer along the bottom and then one layer along the top, an inner layer. Well, there's, there's two main types of tissue that give you a double layer of kind of cuboidal to columnar. Cuboidal and columnar cells are kind of closely related. Sweat ducts do that, and then also some, some parts of the salivary duct system do the same thing. And sweat glands and salivary glands actually have a lot in common, and we see a lot of similarities in the tumors that come from sweat gland origin in the skin, as well as salivary gland origin in the head and neck region. So there, I think there's a lot of similarity there. So in any case, this is a, this is a double layer of cuboidal cells. And oh, you can also see that some of them have these little kind of tufts or blebs sticking into the surface there. So when we see that, we often think of apocrine cells. So this is actually a sweat duct um, cyst, a cyst derived from sweat ducts, and this is called a hydrocystoma. And hydrocystomas can either be eccrine or apocrine. Um, I don't make a big deal about telling them apart. It doesn't really matter if I happen to see little apocrine snouts. You can say apocrine hydrocystoma. But for practical purposes, it doesn't matter because they're both benign. And um, they usually occur as multiple little uh, bumps that have a kind of a bluish or a translucent kind of uh, look to them. And they're usually on the upper cheeks or the eyelid area. So they can be multiple. So we, we see these as biopsies a lot. And the other thing is that sometimes, because you know the eyelid, you don't necessarily want to do a big biopsy, sometimes people will get, get a little kind of thin shave and just barely nick the top of it. So if you're looking at a bump from the eyelid and it looks like normal skin and you can't see much there, try to always remember to look down at the base of your shave biopsy and see if you can find a little tiny touch of a hydrocystoma um, hiding out down there. And see, they tend to have kind of a dense layer of collagen around them. So sometimes all you'll see is, is that layer of collagen and that can make it a little bit tricky if you don't know what to look for. So here, let me show you. I think, I think there's another section from this. And you can see, ah, see what I'm talking about? Here you go. You can see the, the cyst right here, no problem. And that kind of snout-like apocrine um, layer looks a lot, is a lot easier to see here. So that's just another part of the apocrine hydrosystoma. But look here, see that dense band of kind of basement membrane material? And there's just a tiny bit of epithelium, but most of it's kind of ripped off or torn away during processing. But if you see that kind of band of dense pink stuff, always stop and think, oh, maybe there's a hydrosystoma or um, other types of sweat gland tumors particularly um, will tend to have a lot of this dense pink basement membrane material. So if I ever see a lot of that in the skin, I always start thinking about an adnex a skin adnexal or a sweat gland tumor. So hydrosystoma, benign. Uh, from the eyelid.